Hi, it's Dwyer. It's August the 29th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's just make it a free-flowing type of thing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just tell you, I was once in a bar, we were all watching sports, me and a bunch of other people who were there, and there was a conversation. And one of the guys turned to me and uh, said to me, <laughs> and I wasn't even part of the conversation really, he turns to me and he says to me, well, you know, you're an older guy. You might not understand. Right? I was shocked. You know, because sports fans, you're just in a sports book. You aren't really paying attention to everyone's age. Right? I'm really there fixated on betting lines and food and beer. Right? So I heard that and I thought, wow, you got to be kidding me. Well, understand. Um, I was looking at the Canelo um, Jaime Munguia fight. And I just happened to have the computer up. And it had X on. So I thought, okay, let me go look at X and see what people are thinking. And I ended up in some thread with a bunch of young people. And most of them, let's say 80, 85%, were rooting openly for Jaime Munguia. Uh, people were talking about Canelo being too old. <laughs> and uh, Let's just say it's then that I realized that there is an age dynamic in boxing. Right? Younger people are watching a different sport than the rest of us. Now, understand, sometimes that youth extends to who makes these videos, who's actually a boxing reporter. So let me say something that may have gotten lost over the years, because my generation saw things differently than this one. Understand, when I was growing up, you knew who champions were. Whatever the belts were, you understood one truth, and it was a truth. Larry Holmes was the heavyweight champ. Right? You could see other guys win belts. And your thought, as the guy had the belt draped on his shoulder, your thought was, gee, I wonder what'll happen when he fights for the real title against Larry Holmes. Now let me just make a point here. I know no one says this, but it's a little unfair to be hyping these undisputed guys. Because, understand, it's a big accomplishment. It's Hall of Fame worthy stuff. But for my generation, in fact, I believe this is the way it was until Crawford. You had obvious champs. I'm talking about obvious champs. Floyd Mayweather best fighter in boxing and there was no outcry I'm talking about no outcry for Mayweather to become undisputed right Manny Pacquiao there was no outcry it just wasn't a thing in other words back in the day and by the way when I say back in the day I'm not talking about that long ago right back in the day it was enough for a fighter to be the best. Right? So, you know, I looked at fighters like Alexis Arguello. Never crossed my mind. I mean, never crossed my mind. As to whether he was undisputed. Because you understood. This guy is the baddest man on the planet. In his weight class. Right? Now, I remember Lennox Lewis becoming undisputed. But even then, it wasn't that big a deal. Right, because of course, you know, we were coming out of really the Larry Holmes era, right? Holmes was a big figure in boxing. And, you know, back then, some people would say, oh, you want the WBC belt. We didn't even think about, you know, getting all the belts. You were actually thinking about the sanctioning body. I remember I looked at Deontay Wilder at one point and he had the WBC belt. And I thought, man, this dude must be a bad man. Right? Never crossed my mind about, gee, is he undisputed? 
Right, so understand Pacquiao, Mayweather, Larry Holmes. You know, they they really weren't in the hunt to be undisputed. There were fights where one guy had one belt, one guy had another belt. That just made that event bigger and badder. You didn't think about the other two belts the guys didn't have. Right, understand this is a generational thing. Young people, when they start the conversation of, wow, is he undisputed? You're right. Old timers like me have to lean back in our chair and bite our tongue. Right? Because we didn't think, oh, is Roberto Duran <laughs> undisputed? You knew he was the baddest lightweight on the planet. Right? Whether he had the belts and stuff didn't really matter. Let me also say, too, back in the day, fighters really viewed fighting differently. It's like today you look at some fighters and they're always in shape and I applaud that. I think that's one of the secrets to success. But understand back in the day you saw some guys and they were clearly out of shape especially when you saw them at other people's fights. In other words you know some guy would be sitting there at some fight they would announce him Right, they'd say, Roberto Duran, you know, and he'd be ringside for some match, and he wasn't training. You know, the whole point, you know, this is the Ricky Hatton lifestyle. This is the Ricky Hatton approach to boxing. The whole reason why you wanted the belt was so you could walk around town knowing that you're the champion. Right, not so you could stay in the gym and fine-tune your game, no. Champs were out and about. There'd be a fight in Las Vegas, and you'd see all these dudes hanging out, right? Matthew Saad Muhammad. I mean, you know, if you had a belt, you were there to be seen, right? That's the way it was. You know, guys were, well, I'll just say, look, it, it's a generational thing. The sports evolved. Understand the guys in the sport now prioritize things that we didn't even think about back in the day. How much time do you think I spent on whether Larry Holmes was undisputed? Folks, I, I spent no time on that. It was enough for me to see Holmes beat Norton. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was enough for me to see Holmes beat Jerry Cooney. Then you said, okay, this is the guy, right? This is the guy, you know, when, when Holmes fought Ali, folks, that's a mismatch. Understand, Ali went on to go the distance with guys like Trevor Burbank against Larry Holmes. That's a mismatch. Now, if someone asked Larry Holmes in an interview, I don't even recall this happening. Are you going to try to be undisputed? I'm telling you, a lot of people would have laughed. Right? Earlier generation, we would have thought, well, what's the point of that? Right? It's like Mayweather. Right, you know he's the best. You know, if some other guy has a title, okay, good for him. You know, um, he's feeding his family. He's able to sell his fights and stuff like that. But you knew who the best was. Well, let's change gears. Let's talk about this generation. Terrence Crawford, multiple undisputed. And I'm not belittling the accomplishment. It's huge. Right, I'm glad I lived through it. Crawford is a dominant fighter. Just like the Olympics need gold medals, boxing needs icons. Right? Standard setters. Crawford is a standard setter in more ways than one. Not just undisputed in two different weight classes, but the fact that he is a closer. I know his last fight went the distance. Just understand, it's years, years since anyone at 147 made it the distance with Crawford. With Crawford, the issue wasn't even who won the fight. Right? Because, of course, you understood the fight wasn't going the distance. Well, some sanctioning body um, has said to Crawford, hey, you need to fight Sebastian Fundora. Right, folks? Is this a joke? Understand, Crawford really is retired now. Right, Fundora's in a different sport. Fundora is the young guy trying to get scouts. He's the young guy making his name. He's the young guy who wants championship fights in part for the paydays. 
right? He wants the publicity. Crawford, by contrast, has been there, done that, right? If I'm Crawford, I'm through collecting belts. If they were to strip Canelo and I were to get the Canelo fight, of course I'd take the fight if I'm Crawford. I think he loses that fight now. I used to think differently, but I think he loses that fight now, now that we saw him against Madrimov. But just understand, Crawford's about legacy. He doesn't care about belts at this point. I mean, the belt would be nice, but, you know, the resume is already first ballot. You understand that. And, of course, why Canelo and no one else? Because he wants to fight legendary fighters. Right? He's an older fighter. He knows it. If he's going to risk his unbeaten record, it better be against some dude who's a legend. You got a lot of real tough young guys out there. Maybe these young guys will become legends. Maybe. You and I know the odds are against them. Well, Canelo's a legend right now. So that's Crawford's one fight. No knock on Fondora. But Fondora's going to have to do a hell of a lot more. He's going to have to put up Canelo type of accomplishments before he warrants serious consideration. If I'm Crawford, I wouldn't even consider fighting Fondora. Right? Crawford just picked up a belt at 154. If the sanctioning body said, hey man, you better fight this guy or we're going to strip you, I'd say, hey, player, take the belt now. I'm not going to fight again in this weight class. What's the point? I want fans, when they get to the Terrence Crawford section of the history book, to see that at the end, if someone beat me, that person better be named Canelo. Right, that's the point. Not some young gun on the way up, no matter how nice the young gun is. Right? You know, I'm telling you, I was raised in a household. This is uh, back when we did not have a remote control. And if a film came on of Rocky Marciano knocking Joe Lewis out of the ring, my dad wouldn't miss a beat. He'd say, hey, Rich, change the channel. Didn't matter what I changed it to. By the way, yeah, we had dials back then. Not even remotes. It wasn't like I could grab the remote and say, okay, yeah, I, I, got, I got that, Dad. No, I had to get out of my seat and go change the channel. You don't want to be Joe Lewis losing Rocky Marciano. It would have been different. It would have been different if Joe Lewis lost to some other esteemed guy. Now, Marciano, of course, goes on to be unbeaten. But the way that fight's remembered is old gunslinger against young guy. If I'm Crawford, I want to go out fighting a contemporary. Now let me make another point here too. Crawford's only half of the equation. The guy outside of the heavyweight division who holds all the cards in boxing right now is Canelo. Let's be clear on that. It's not in a way. It's not Crawford. It's Canelo. Now, if Canelo loses to Berlanga, folks, the Crawford fights off. In other words, Crawford wants to fight Canelo while Canelo's on a winning streak. Right? The fight doesn't mean much if Canelo starts losing. Right? Take that Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder fight. Right? Understand, Wilder's lost a couple of fights in a row. That fight has lost its luster. Right? For those guys to fight and have it be real meaningful, don't get me wrong, it still draws a crowd, just not as big a crowd as it would have. For it to get back to event level status, Deontay Wilder would have to come back and beat someone meaningful. Right? So just understand, if Canelo loses a fight to Berlanga, that Crawford-Canelo match out the window not gonna happen what's the point see it from both of their sides if I'm Crawford I'm 40 and 0 well 40 whatever and oh I'm unbeaten right why do I want to risk that on a guy who's just lost 
right? I don't want people going around saying, hey, he fought a Canelo who just lost, and Canelo still beat him. I don't want that on my record. If I'm Canelo, if I just lost to Berlanga, right, the last thing I need is some guy jumping up two weight classes, not even one weight class. It's 154 all the way up to 168 to fight me. And if I lost that fight, gee, it's time to hit the exit, isn't it? So understand, if you're hoping for Crawford against Canelo, and Canelo recently said, hey, you know, I haven't said I'm not going to fight him. If that fight happens, just understand that Canelo has to keep winning for it to happen. Let's talk about why Canelo holds all the cards right now outside of the heavyweight division. Right? Canelo is box office. You understand that. Let's look closely at 175 pounds. You have unbeaten Beevil against unbeaten Baturbiev. Right now, understand how this could play out. I'm not going to tip my hand here on who I think wins that fight. I'm going to save that for premium subscribers. But let's say Baturbiev beats Beevil. Let's say David Benavides is up next for Arthur Baturbiev. Right, folks, I'm just telling you that if Baturbiev beats David Benavides, the biggest fight he can have isn't Morrell, it's Canelo, isn't it? Think about this. If Baturbiev beats Beevil, who had beaten Canelo? And then Baturbiev beats Benavides. That's if that fight happens. Right? Understand if Canelo then steps up and beats Baturbiev. And folks, Baturbiev's a headhunter. Canelo is gifted defensively. The best part, well, one of the best parts of Canelo's game is how he can duck his head. Are you certain that a shorter fighter who hits hard, who can get inside an Arthur Baturbiev, right, a guy who got knocked down by Marcus Brown, right, are you certain that if Baturbiev is not able to hit Canelo on the side of the head, and understand, Canelo is a master of leaning his head. Canelo can also make you miss. Look at the Danny Jacobs fight. If you can't hit Canelo in the head, and you're a front foot heavy fighter who can't stay outside on Canelo, um, you know, if you don't have an advanced back foot like Caleb Plant did, that fight was closer than we think, right? Canelo, of course, gets the stoppage, knockouts cause amnesia. But if you don't have the educated back foot and you're trying to headhunt Canelo, who's going to get inside and who's going to start ripping your body, look at the Canelo-Liam Smith fight. Are you certain as you sit here that Arthur Baturbiev beats Canelo? Understand how many cards Canelo holds. If Canelo beats Berlanga, he could pivot and say, Hey Crawford, how serious are you? I'm here, I have time on my calendar. Are we going to do this or not? Right, let's say that Canelo-Crawford fight doesn't happen. Then Canelo, who does not need another fight to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Canelo can go and start looking at other people's fights. Right? Canelo can be in the crowd watching. You know, the light heavyweight unification match. Beevil Baturbiev. If Baturbiev wins that fight, Canelo can then be in the crowd. Watching the Benavides Baturbiev fight. If Baturbiev wins that fight, understand the favor he will have done Canelo. Canelo could then fight a guy who beat a guy who beat him. Right? A guy who beat Beevil. All the hoopla about Benavides, the only way Canelo ends up fighting Baturbiev is if Baturbiev gets by Benavides. If Canelo were to then beat Baturbiev, right? Oh my goodness, folks. You know, Canelo's already huge. Even the young people who were booing him during the Jaime Munguia fight 
would have to say, damn, Canelo's topping himself, isn't he? Right, so Canelo holds a lot of cards. I'm not saying there aren't guys out there who would give him problems. Right, a dark horse out there who I think gives him problems is Diego Pacheco. Right, David Morrell looks awfully good to me. There's some dangerous fighters out there. Let me just say too, Benavides is a savant. Right, Benavides Canelo is an interesting fight. Benavides is a guy who throws uppercuts. Benavides is a wicked body puncher. He's not completely dependent on headshots. Right, so just food for thought on that. Let me um, finally just say that the heavyweight division is going to crowd out the room, right? Because you have a fight. We're not playing it up the way we should. But you have a new generation in the building, right? Some guy in his mid-20s who somehow has already fought Joe Joyce, has already fought Usyk, has already fought Ergovic, right? Has fought Gerald Miller. Now, just to understand, young guys grow up, right? You see a guy, he looks young. He might look like he's missing some skills. Uh, Peyton Manning, when he first entered the NFL, folks, just do the research. Look at the number of picks that Peyton Manning, an all-time great, threw his rookie year. There's a learning curve. Right now, in the heavyweight division, since we're talking about alternative scenarios, if Daniel Dubois beats AJ, and I believe Lawrence Acoli, right, best analysis I've seen on the fight, Acoli, the Bridgerweight champion, is saying, look, AJ has to start fast. AJ can't allow this young guy to feel comfortable. I believe that a hundred percent. Right? I just saw <laughs> I just saw the young guy beat Jarrell Miller. I just saw the young guy come out and smoke Philippe Ergovic. Right? I you know, if Dubois comes out, young generation, and he has that youthful twenty six year old energy. I'm telling you, he could make a bunch of guys look old in a hurry. Now, we need to really ask ourselves, what happens if Dubois wins the fight? Right? I know the odds makers have made this fight lopsided odds-wise. But just ask yourself the question, because Dubois is not coming to outbox AJ. He's trying to land, he's trying to finish. Right? If Dubois beats AJ, is the Jaime Munguia crowd back in the heavyweight division? Are young people now suddenly going to say, oh my goodness, one of us is heavyweight champ? Right? Now you have an interesting setup here where finally, <laughs> a few years late, but finally, we're set up so AJ is supposed to fight Tyson Fury. Now if Fury comes out and beats Usyk, right, what happens? Let's ask the question, what happens if this rejuvenated, a little bit older version of Daniel Dubois fights <laughs> Tyson Fury? Right, because Fury, let's face it, has been knocked down in some fights. Hasn't he? Right? Understand. There's nothing stopping that fight from happening. Because Frank Warren is helping both fighters. Right? The fighters... <laughs> let's just say the fighters know how to get in touch with each other. They share the same promoter. Right? Also understand too. The United Kingdom has owned the heavyweight division now for several years. Now I agree. Usyk, you've had guys step in and have their glory. Usyk right now, Ukrainian, 
very proud Ukrainian, uh, comes in the ring wearing Ukrainian colors, right? We get it. But when I say owns the heavyweight division, you understand they have a sellout right now for Dubois against AJ. You understand we've been, you know, waiting for AJ against Tyson Fury. If Tyson Fury gets back on top, and he's the big underdog right now, right? Plus 145 the last I looked. If he gets back on top of the heavyweight division, what happens if he fights Daniel Dubois? Right? Understand, Dubois is the next wave if he can pull it off. Right? This is a guy who has experience no other 26 year old in the world has right understand too i know riyadh season has rejuvenated boxing i know a lot of boxers have gotten some big paydays right there's nothing as exciting as i believe we're going to find out with this aj dubois fight as two fighters from the same country solving things in front of that country's fans right whether it's Ali Fraser New York City you know understand Joshua Dubois London Dubois Tyson Fury hopefully in the UK right fans should show up at the airport if those guys decide to have that fight outside of the UK and they should boo the guys you know, to let them know, hey man, how come you're not having this in London? Right? Just understand, Dubois is very important. Of course, the best made plans can go out the window. He's a heavy underdog to British Olympic gold medalist, Anthony Joshua. Understand, Joshua is in that Ray Leonard part of his career. If you remember Ray toward the end where Joshua, after all the criticism and, you know, fan fatigue, is now setting the record straight. He's having that, you know, back nine, where he's still swinging a good golf club, right? So let's pay attention to what happens in boxing, folks. It's all set up. You're set up perfectly for 12 months of excitement, right? Let me say this, too. It wasn't long ago that Joe Joyce was the mandatory contender and made the mistake of fighting Zhili Zhang, right? Don't rule out guys with talent who have made mistakes, right? Because, you know, one can imagine some heavyweight making a mistake of saying, well, I saw Joe Joyce on his back against Derek Chisora. I'm young, I'm fearless. I'm ready for Joe who's in his late 30s only to find out that power is the last to go right let's just say the heavyweight division right now folks is unsettled might be settled if Usyk who's already beaten Dubois who's already beaten Joshua beats Tyson Fury again then you're talking about the United Kingdom being conquered by a Ukrainian right it could get settled but right now it's unsettled when a guy wins a championship fight by one point on the last judge's card. I consider that unsettled, right? Let's see what Tyson Fury has up his sleeve for us. Let me also point out too that the UK's dominance in boxing is so great that it extends to the Bridgerweight division. Right, Lawrence Acoli is the Bridgerweight champion. Right, let's recognize that as good as Usyk is, this really is a British era for heavyweights. Right, now that could change if Usyk beats Fury a second time. Right, if he does and if Dubois beats AJ, Folks, you're looking at a rematch where there are many in the crowd, myself included, 
who believe that that was a legitimate punch that Dubois landed on Usyk. Right? Food for thought. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. To sum up, don't expect Terrence Crawford to fight anybody other than Canelo. Right? Let me point out, too, it needs to be mentioned. Folks, the water is deep at 160. Right? Crawford would have a problem with Hamza Shiraz, for crying out loud, right? Because Shiraz would keep him outside. Understand the mistake Madrimov made. Right? Madrimov was coming in the pocket on Crawford. Right? Crawford looked like he had a problem with the weight, my opinion. Right? Madrimov should have gone for the stoppage. I know it's heresy. The Crawford side of the line is going to say, hey, he should have tried for the stoppage. Right? <laughs> you know, had he stayed in the pocket, he would have been knocked out. I'm not sure. Because I consider Madrimov to be a better athlete than Crawford. Crawford's relying on a jab, folks. You're in against an older guy. A guy on the other side of 35. And he's relying on a jab. Right? And you're at least matching him on power shots. And you understand. Crawford, historical figure in boxing. Right? People want to see whether he's going to win a you know, title in a fourth weight class. That was the situation. If you're a Madrimov, you should not have relied on the judges. Let me also say that had Madrimov tried to knock out Crawford, who is a great counterpuncher, and had Crawford caught him, right? I don't think Madrimov's career would have taken a hit. Because Crawford is that kind of uh, legendary figure who any guy who comes in and who goes for it is going to get some admiration from the crowd for trying to beat a legend coming in the front door. Right? I thought Madrimov made a mistake. If I'm Crawford, I think back to that fight. I think about how I had to rely on my jab. I'm certainly not taking my game to the middleweight division. Right? Let me also say, too, the middleweight division has what I call a Marvin Hagler figure in it. Right? John Abeck. I know he's not well known. Who cares? When it comes time to bet on fights, I'm looking for winners. Right? I'm just telling you, Madrimov didn't go for the stoppage. John Abeck certainly would. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.